Welcome back to this series on standard electrode potentials. We are on the finishing straight. This is the last video and I want you to be really clear as to how a standard electrode potential is defined and the three questions we're going to look at now are if hydrogen is used as the reference electrode what EMF should it have? Uh, number two be there why does it matter which side we put the reference electrode on and finally what things do we need to do consistently in order to build up a table of standard electrode potentials so first question if hydrogen is used as the reference electrode and it is used as the reference electrode what emf should it have and here i've uh, drawn out a hydrogen half cell being measured against the reference electrode which is a hydrogen half cell so of course there is no potential difference and the voltage of the hydrogen reference electrode is zero volts uh, next question, uh, why does it matter which side we put the reference electrode on? And uh, here I'm measuring the zinc half cell relative to hydrogen half cell. And depending which way round we put the zinc and the hydrogen, the recorded voltage is going to be different. As you can see, with the zinc on the left hand side, uh, there's a voltage recorded as plus 0.76 volts. But the other way around, the reading is minus 0.76 volts. And once again, we want to be able to quote the electrode potential of zinc relative to hydrogen without having to clarify each time on which side we've put the reference electrode. So we have a second convention, which is that the reference electrode is on the left-hand side. Uh, I.e. this one here would be the correct way to measure the electrode potential of zinc and uh, not this one here. And now we're ready to answer this last question. What things do we need to do consistently in order to build up a table of standard electrode potentials? So number one, uh, left hand half cell into negative terminal of the voltmeter. And number two, the left hand half cell is to be uh, the hydrogen half cell. And then thirdly, we need standard conditions. So for gases, one atmosphere, for uh, concentrations, one mole per decimeter cubed, elements in their standard states, and 298 degrees Kelvin. And this diagram here shows how we would measure the standard electrode potential of uh, Cl2, Cl-. And as you can see, the voltmeter has the negative terminal on the left. It has the hydrogen half cell on the left. And this uh, would have to have been done at one atmosphere for the hydrogen, one atmosphere pressure for the chlorine, one mole per decimeter cubed for the H+, and for the Cl-, and at 298 degrees Kelvin. The measured potential here is plus 1.38 volts, so we can say that the standard electrode potential for Cl2, Cl- is plus 1.38 volts. And this uh, next example shows the correct measurement of the standard electrode potential for nickel in contact with nickel 2 plus ions. And the negative sign of the voltage here indicates that the nickel half cell is pushing electrons onto the electrode more strongly than the hydrogen half cell. And this uh, last example is the measurement of uh, AG, AG+, plus, uh, which comes out as plus 0.8 volts. So we can now put these electrode potentials on the electrochemical reactivity series. And what we see is that the values which are more negative represent the half cells which tend to lose electrons. And those which are more positive are the half cells which tend to gain electrons. And just before we finish, let's tie this in with what we know about reactivity. A reactive metal will tend to lose electrons, and a reactive non-metal will tend to gain electrons. And this is exactly what we see. This reactive metals such as zinc can become uh, Zn2 plus ions in the half cell and therefore lose electrons. And this leads to a negative voltage being recorded. And reactive uh, non-metals such as chlorine can gain electrons from the electrode to become Cl minus ions. This is recorded as a positive voltage in the standard electrode potential. Okay, that's it for this series. Uh, well done for getting to the end. I hope this tricky topic is starting to make a bit more sense. If you've liked this tutorial, do watch the next series uh, in which I'm going to describe the electrochemical series and how we can use these electrode potentials to do calculations. Bye for now, and thanks for watching.